Today we're going to take a look at some of the new features that are in Lightroom 2, the final release version, not the public beta anymore. In the library section, we have the new section under folders where we can actually see the different local drives that we have and how much disk space is available on each one. So we'll see we have 339 gigs out of 462. If I have multiple local drives, it will then show me more folders over here. So that's very, very cool. In the collections, there's new things called smart collections. And these can be based on stars, based on different tags, the ones in the last month, recently modified, things with keywords. So you can create all kinds of smart collections. So as you tag things with weddings they can automatically show up in a weddings I don't use that as much as I just use collections so I have this collection set inside this collection set I have multiple collections that's how I organize all my stuff you can see down here I have a weddings collection set and then underneath that I have different weddings so under here I can do a lot of different things I'm going to go ahead and open up this one I'm going to go over to develop we're going to look at some of the develop settings so you'll see there's a few changes over on the right hand side. Most of them aren't going to be really apparent except that some of the tools have been moved from being underneath the image where they used to be over to the upper right hand corner now. We have a crop tool, spot removal, red eye, a new one called graduated filter, and probably the single most important tool in Lightroom 2.0 which is the adjustment brush. And I can crop this in as tight as I want. Go really tight on her face because I want to show you some really neat things that are in the other tools. We can see this is pretty good. You know, we can see some good detail in the face here. But what we really want to do is give her that supermodel look. You're going to love this. We're going to go to the adjustment brush. Now under here, this is a brush that we can actually paint directly onto the image. Under here we can adjust exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity, sharpness, color, or this new one, this wasn't even in the beta, called Soften Skin. I'm going to use the Soften Skin one. Now as I paint over the face, look what it's doing. It's really smoothing it out giving us a nice soft texture on there. As soon as I'm done, we'll take a look at the before and after so you can see the effect. I'll go ahead and come all the way down in the neck. You can see it actually kind of erases some wrinkles there. Let's take a look at our mask, see where we're at. Okay, you can see I skipped a few areas. I'm going to get a little closer. Just want to make sure I cover everything. Now you can't even do the lips. It'll smooth out the lips a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to click close on here. And now, this is the after. And that's the before. After, before. So it's not a big change, but it's enough that it can really make a huge difference in a portrait. It gives a nice, smooth, almost porcelain look to it. Now let's say I wanted to do some other things with, let's zoom into our lips here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Come over here and we'll grab a brush. Let's make this a saturation one. And we're going to kick the saturation up quite a bit. And now, again, we'll just paint directly over the lips, which is going to add some deeper color. See that red filling in there very nicely? Just like applying a little extra lip gloss, we're just going to touch up those lips a little bit. I'm going to go to a new one and this is just going to be exposure. 
I'm going to take it to about a half a stop plus. I'm going to go over the teeth a little bit. And notice I can just really bump up the whiteness in the teeth. I'm going to get a little smaller of a brush here. Just give that little extra detail right there. Now, let's go to the before and after. Now, she actually likes having some of these little moles and things that she has, but let's go ahead and take them out just for the sake of this. So, I'm notice how I'm adjusting the size of this brush. I can do that with either the scroll wheel on the mouse, or I like to use the left and right bracket keys. But if I'm just on the mouse, it's really handy just to use that. And I'm just going to clone that right out. And all gone. So you can see with some really simple adjustments, we've really changed this image and made it a lot nicer of a portrait. That is the beauty of the adjustment brush. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another image that will show off some of the other features. Let's take a fun image like this. Now again, we can come over here to the adjustment brush and let's bop, pop the exposure down, let's say three stops. Get my brush a little bigger here and I can just kind of black out this background if I wanted to. Really just clean it up, the outside edges. So I could kind of create a vignette like that if I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and step back a few. And instead of doing that, we'll try a couple other little things. First, let's take a look at the graduated filter. So you can see I can pull this in here and adjust it for different angles, different properties here. This is just like using a graduated neutral density filter in your camera, except you can do it right here in software. So of course this is going to be really good for landscaping so you can flip this over, darken the sky without losing detail in your ground, something like that at a beach scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. Now if I adjust the exposure on this, I can get it to where you can't really tell, or I can just fade that bottom part pretty much right out. And give yourself a little effect going on like that. Now a minute ago I talked about vignetting. In Lightroom 1.0, you only had one type of vignette. You had the lens correction. I'm going to go ahead and reset this image and get rid of everything. With that, we could come in, pull in the images, and kind of create a vignette around it. The problem was, this only works before you crop an image because it was designed to correct problems with lenses. So if you had a certain lens or a filter or something, you'd often get a, a dark edge around it, and then you could just kind of lighten those edges up by playing around with different things and try and get rid of that. What a lot of people wanted to do was to use the vignetting to create more artistic looks. So now we have the post crop vignette. And now I can come in, I can do my vignetting, same as I could before, but some other tools I have to make it look less software-ish is I can adjust the roundness. Now if I go all the way one side, it's just going to be almost a, just a big circle. If I go the other direction, it's going to kind of soften it a little bit. But we're going to try and open it up just enough. And same with feathering. I can feather it all the way down to a spotlight, or I can feather it all the way out to where it blends really nicely into what I'm trying to do. 